Can you imagine what would happen if we took Jesus' teaching about judging to heart? I'm rereading a book that came out in 2002 entitled When Bad Christians Happen to Good People by David Burkett, and I've been struck again by the proliferation of the misuse of judgment making within the Christian church. While the Bible encourages us to be discerning and to use sound judgment, as well as to hold one another in the Christian community accountable and to spur one another on to love and good deeds, the sort of judgment we see most often in life, and dare I say, especially in, in church, is the sort of judgment that Jesus taught against. The kind of judgment that Jesus warns against is that kind that causes us to condemn others to elevate our supposed piety and even to condone our lesser sins. The Christian community loves to come out swinging when it comes to sins that we have strong opinions against. Currently on the hit list of many are homosexuality and, and abortion. A few decades ago, it was divorce and premarital sex. Yet human trafficking, sexual abuse by Christian leaders and the greed caused impoverishment of many, while they may stir up regret and shame, retain our attention for only brief periods before amnesia sets in again. The truth of the matter is we would rather villainize some and write them off as God forsaken than enter their messy worlds in an attempt to truly be the hands and feet of Jesus. And then there's the lesser sins like gossip, hatred, jealousy, tight fistedness, inhospitality, and gluttony, all of which directly contravene Jesus' commandment that we're to love others as we love ourselves. But for some reason, these tend to get a pass within the Christian circles. Well, Jesus didn't have any such scale when it came to grading sin. Jesus told his disciples in Matthew 15, verse 19, from the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, lying, and slander. Jesus makes no distinction between evil thoughts and lying versus murder and sexual immorality. It all falls short of obedience to God. It all finds its source in the sinfulness of human hearts. It all requires God forgiveness. And we are all susceptible. No one's innocent. So today, with that truth in mind, I'd like to break down some of the things that Jesus tells us about judging. Let's begin with the first point. Don't assume the role of judge. So from Matthew 7, verses one and two, we read Jesus continuing his sermon on the mount by saying, do not judge others and you will not be judged for you will be treated as you treat others. The slander you use, the standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. When we judge, when we judge others, we are promised that the same measuring stick we use to judge will be used on us. The only one fit to make judgments concerning who is to be rewarded and condemned is Jesus, because the role of eternal judge requires someone who is without sin, and none of us can claim that status from 1 John 1.8. Now, I highly doubt that anyone would claim to be perfect, but Jesus is quick to point out that none of us should claim to be better either. There's a common theme that we've seen in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount when it comes to our treatment of an attitude toward others. What we dish out, either good or bad, will come back to us. It isn't karma. It's a God-given promise. First, as in this morning, do not judge or you will be judged. I don't think Jesus could have made it any clearer, but we use measuring sticks to judge people all the time. How they dress, how they talk. Do their kids behave in public? What kind of work do they do? How much money do they have? Do we enjoy their contributions or bad looks? We claim that we're measuring people against the truth of God's word, but how often does it really just boil down to our opinions and our preferences? We've already come across in Matthew 5, 7, where Jesus tells us those who show mercy will be shown mercy. But what if we don't? Well, we won't receive God's mercy. And from Matthew 6, 14, 15, same sermon. Jesus says those who forgive will be forgiven. But if we withhold forgiveness from another as though somehow they are answerable to us, well, God won't forgive us. God cannot make it clearer than he already has. He does not and will not play favorites. 
1 Peter 1, 17. Those who have chosen to accept God's free gift of forgiveness and life eternal in heaven with him through the work of Jesus are not somehow better in his eyes or more loved. How entitled are we when we think that somehow our acceptance of a free gift, which we couldn't earn, that is freely offered to anyone and everyone, somehow warrants us special status in the eyes of God? Yes, we are ensured a place in heaven, but God truly does want everyone there. The only difference between us and them is having said yes. The second thing that Jesus talks about in this topic of judging is deal with your own stuff. Matthew 7 verse 3. And don't worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own. How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see the past, the log in your own? Hypocrite. Jesus really didn't have patience for religious hypocrites and attempting to help another while ignoring our own simple attitudes and habits is nothing short of hypocrisy. We can't truly help another as long as we live in this sort of denial. And as I was preparing for this, I thought of how often and how many people who've experienced pain in their own lives enter helping professions in attempt to relieve their own past hurts. But a hurting professional cannot hurt, help a hurting client. They must first experience healing for themselves. And the same is true of sin. Some leaders have attempted to deal with sin in their lives by teaching others what it means to obey God. But time and again, we see these leaders and their ministries come crashing down as their sin catches up with them. Jesus taught that in order to help another, we must first deal with our own stuff. Pretending it doesn't exist won't make it go away. We all have specks and logs, which we must deal with. And with the Holy Spirit's help, we can. The third point, Jesus tells us, help others. From Matthew 7, verse 5, first get rid of the log in your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Refraining from judging does not mean that we simply stand back and watch as our Christian brothers and sisters struggle. Jesus tells us to deal with the sins in the lives of fellow Christians once we can do so with the proper attitude, humbly and gently, from Galatians 6.1, fully acknowledging our own propensity towards sin. Not judging another also doesn't mean that there's no accountability. Have you ever heard someone say, you can't judge me? which really translates, you can't tell me that I'm doing anything wrong. But that is not what Jesus is saying. No, he doesn't want us to condemn one another, but we are instructed in scripture to encourage one another, teach one another, reprove one another, which is an old fashioned way to say correct, and help one another stay on the true path of obedience to God. Now that requires that we use sound judgment when discerning right from wrong. While some things fall into the category of personal opinion, other things are far more black and white. You don't have to look hard to find things that Jesus condemned. What did Jesus reserve for his harshest criticism? Well, selfishness, pride, hypocrisy, greed, power grabs, unforgiveness, hatred, and judging others. So why is it that the things that Jesus condemned are often the things that we let slide? His primary concern is with the condition of our hearts and the attitudes that erupt from it that act as fertilizer for sinful behaviors. We often only take notice when sin is shown up in action. Jesus knew that sin must be addressed at the root, even before the action. We have the habit of turning a blind eye until the problems can't be ignored, both in our own lives and the lives of others. And then Jesus' final word here. Verse six, what if someone rejects your help to discern right from wrong and to make better choices? Well, Jesus answers that question. He says, don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. They will trample the pearls that turn and attack you. Now in the first century, dogs were rarely kept as pets. They roamed in packs and were sometimes dangerous to the human population. Pigs on the other hand were raised by Gentiles for meat and were voracious eaters. Neither dogs nor pigs were particularly picky about what they ate, and both could attack if hungry. To be called a dog or pig was not a compliment, 
And Jesus is most definitely drawing a comparison to some people, though not as an insult, but as a life lesson. He was pointing at the fact that no matter your good intentions, some people will always take advantage, not be satisfied, and even turn to attack those attempting to help them if dissatisfied with the type of help offered. That fact still doesn't provide us with an excuse to judge, but it is a reminder that even with the purest intentions and a genuine desire to care, not all will want what we have to offer. Rather than finding comfort from the light of Jesus in our lives, some will shield their eyes from its brightness. Rather than enjoying the new flavor we add when we are God's salt, we may find some spitting out what we offer in disgust. We are not to beat ourselves up for this or simply dig in and try harder. Everyone has a free will, which we are to respect. As difficult as it may be to see someone choose to walk a path that will ultimately lead to their destruction. However, we are not to stop loving them. The person who may reject your message today may be the very one who comes asking for your help in the future. So what are our takeaways? Well, for beginners, we are not to assume the role of judge. There is one judge whom we will all stand before, and it's his sacrifice that ensures any one of us has a place in heaven. Secondly, before you attempt to help another, make certain that you are yourself entirely transparent and are dealing with the sin in your own life. Third, Jesus' command not to judge does not mean that we aren't to be accountable to one another. Blatant sin is not to be tolerated as permissible. We should all be holding fellow believers to a higher standard. Fourth, help others humbly and gently. And on the flip side, be willing to receive their help in turn. And finally, as hard as it is to watch people reject the truth we have, we cannot force decisions and behaviors on them. We can share the truth, but only the Holy Spirit can prepare people's hearts to receive it.